So I teach a class uh, for KMOOC, and it's about the ethical consequences and ethical implications of artificial intelligence. I've been teaching this class for the last um, three years, past three years, and I've always had the same final assignment um, when where students have to actually use one of the GPT series language models um, to create a creative piece of writing and they have to react to it. They have to create a response to that um, AI generated text. So I created this assignment um, because I wanted students to have a first-hand experience using an AI technology, and, um, and I wanted to see their reactions. In the past, though, because you know, we were using the earlier versions of the GPT series, um, students' reactions weren't too, um, I guess, positive about this. Positive meaning that they did not think that the technology was that powerful, and they did not think it would be any kind of threat um, to them, especially for their future careers. But now with the chat GPT, their reactions have um, changed a bit, and especially um, um, my senior students who are about to graduate and they're thinking about um, jobs, um, I think they feel a little bit of that kind of threat and they're very concerned how this AI technology is going to affect uh, their careers in the future. So in this final assignment, I have students use uh, an AI language model a program to create a creative piece of writing. And it could be a poem, it could be um, music lyrics, it could be a um, short story or even a movie synopsis. And their actual assignment actually is to respond to it, to um, share with me what their personal reactions are to what they have created with the, the language model. Now they're using chat GPT. And some of the questions that I ask them to address are just, you know, just general personal reactions um, to the language um, model and the text that they got, the machine generated text. I also ask them if they did not know this was created by a machine would they have known that it was not created by a human? Um, I asked them questions also like um, how this would affect their lives personally, as well as for how this would affect people in general. And especially because this is about creativity, creative piece of writing, I also asked them to think about how um, such technologies would you know, make us rethink about this idea of creativity, how we have to redefine what creativity is. The reason that I ask them this question is, is because, you know, these kinds of technologies have always been developed where things are being automated, what people have been doing now, you know, now the machines are doing. That's, that was the point of all of the different industrial revolutions that we've gone through over the past 200 years. But we've always thought that machines won't be able to replace those activities or tasks or jobs that are related to creativity because we thought only humans can be creative. But now with the introduction of chat GPT, now we know that we are not the only ones who can actually create creative products. And it's not just chat GPT. It's a, you know, we have these um, AI powered um, art generators. We have AI powered music generators. Now the machine is doing a lot of these works, these activities related to creativity that only humans were able to do, but now they're doing them. So I wanted students to think more about that and what the implications are for humankind, for us. So this class that I'm teaching is, again, about artificial intelligence and the ethical problems related to artificial intelligence. But ChatGPT is affecting all of our lives in many, many different ways. 
And I think especially as a teacher, um, I have great concerns about students using ChatGPT. And I've been thinking about this for a while, how um, I can actually help students to use ChatGPT well. Yeah. Um, ChatGPT can help them to create a good product at the end. If we focus on the outcome, right? ChatGPT can be very useful, actually. But as a teacher, as somebody who is teaching you know, in school, then you know, the, the outcome is not as important as the learning process. And it seems that ChatGPT, like these kinds of programs like ChatGPT could greatly undermine how students learn and what students can learn. And so um, next semester, I'm teaching a class where um, I will also deal with AI. And I want to actually show them how to use ChatGPT well by first showing them the problems associated with using ChatGPT as a student. And so what I'm thinking about doing in that class um, is creating an assignment where um, the students are uh, designing um, a lesson, like a teaching lesson. The class that I'm teaching is not um, only for education majors, actually, it is a general education class. It's a Kyoyang class um, um, with students from um, you know, lots of different majors, with lots of different majors, but I want them to know or to experience firsthand the problems of using ChatGPT. So the assignment that I want them to do is um, this. It hasn't been um, fully kind of developed yet. This is an idea that I am just playing around with in my head. But I think I'm going to give them an assignment where they have to create a lesson and they have to be the teachers here in this assignment. They have to teach their students something um, they have to create some learning objectives, like what the students need to learn through this assignment, right? And I want them to kind of think about how ChatGPT can help, but really can undermine um, their lesson, and how this could weaken the student's learning outcome at the end. And so that is an assignment that I'm thinking about, right? So uh, hopefully through the assignment, um, they can um, experience once again firsthand how these kinds of technologies can make them become too, as a student, become too dependent on technology. And what we need to do as probably teachers is to help students become more independent of technology. And I can just tell students not to use ChatGPT. I can use students not to use these kinds of technologies. But I don't think they will be able to fully understand why they should be using it, right? Until they're in, in a way, in my shoes as a teacher. So that's why I want to create an, a, an activity, an assignment where they are the teachers and they see, once again, how ChatGPT will not help students to actually learn what they need to learn. Of course, which are critical thinking skills, right? That's the, the, really the basis of all of our lessons. It doesn't matter what kind of class we teach. We want to teach them these critical thinking skills. But the problem with ChatGPT is that it, um, it does everything for them in a way, right? It, it kind of like, it bypasses all of the, the thinking process that is necessary for the students to learn the critical thinking skills, acquire those skills. But the machine is doing everything for them already. And so students are not really learning anything, but they have a very nice outcome that looks very nice, that looks very beautiful. And they think, oh, this is you know what the, what I need to do. So students are focusing on the outcome more, but I think what we as teachers need to do is actually make sure the students know the process is much more important than the outcome at the end. And so I think this kind of like leads to like my final comment, which is that I think we have to really think about how to redo the grading in our classes. Because I think for me, I'm very, I'm, my, grading is like this too, we grade the outcome. And I think especially now with these kinds of technologies like ChatGPT, we can't 
grade the outcome. We can't focus on the outcome, on the outcome too much. Maybe a lot of the grading, the evaluation, needs to be more focused on the actual process of getting to that outcome for the student.